So hi Kelvin, it's uh, an honor to have this opportunity to chat with you today. Um, thanks for taking your time out to talk with us. We appreciate it. How are you doing again? I'm very well, thank you. And thank you very much for having me. I oh. appreciate it. Oh, that's good. That's good. I just wanted to kind of start by um, introducing myself. And I'll just tell you very briefly about Tentatins Magazine. Okay. Yeah? Okay. I'm, I'm Fina IKG. Tentatins Magazine is a, is a magazine website inspired by pre-teens and teens from African, Caribbean and mixed parentage heritage. Um, we kind of inspire to change just this n general negative perception about youths in the UK. And um, what Tentatins tries to kind of aim to do is kind of promote more positive things about what young people are doing, kind of balancing the perception about what, you know, what the general public think about them. Um, we're kind of, we're not ignorant of the fact that um, there's, you know, a few of, you know, our young teenagers and stuff misbehave and stuff, but we just don't want it to be kind of applied to everyone. So ten, 10 to Teens is here to kind of give the other set of, you know, teenagers a voice, if you know, if you kind of see what I mean. So what we do, we, we promote achievements, we talk about youth health, we talk about education, poetry, entertainment, and then we also showcase role models like yourself, who our readers can relate to, they can look up to and they can imitate as well. So this is kind of where you come into, into the picture. Oh. Okay? <laughs> All right. So Kelvin, I, I first saw you um, in a feature um, in The Guardian online and also watched a BBC news segment about you. Yeah, yeah I was so impressed with how, you, how you, your talent with pencil is brought to life. Um, you know, I saw drawings of Tiny Temper, Princess Diana, um, Amy Winehouse, Mother Teresa, Justin Bieber, to mention just a few. And it was really real and impressive. Thank you very much. Yes, you're right. Had you always known that you would draw as a profession? Um, not really. Like, when I was younger, um, I was eight years old when I first vividly remember myself drawing. Okay. Uh, you know, in a life-like manner. Yeah. But um, I had lots of interests when I was younger. Yeah. I used to want to play, you know, play football. I used to want to sing. You yeah. know, I was very, like, active and creative. Mm -hmm. But um, I was 15 um, when I was in my um, secondary school, St. Ignatius College. Yes. I, when I first discovered that I could, I could draw, when I first realised, and that was only because my peers and my teachers would compare my works with, like, modern greats or, oh. you know, and people in the class and saying, you know, yeah. just looking at the skill level. Mm -hmm. So I was 15 when I realised I could draw to a noticeably, noticeably skillful degree. Okay. Um, from there, I just I just completely fell in love with it. I've always had a love and a fascination for the pencils, yes. but it just built as I, as I grew older. As you grew older. Oh, that's, that's fascinating and, and very good to know that. I also saw um, a piece, uh, Jonathan Jones of The Guardian. He wrote this very interesting quote I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read out to you. It says, um, If Leonardo da Vinci was alive today and he saw what Kelvin has achieved with pencil, paper and a bit of charcoal, he would recognize a talent well worthy of his respects. And he goes to say, a brother in arts. I mean, that's such a big, a oh, big um, honor thing. What, what would you say to that great recognition of your skill? That, that is just unbelievable. Yes. Like, but honestly, it's just, I'm so humble yeah. because I know that in this world, yeah. there are so many talented, you yes. know, people younger and older than I am, mm -hmm. but they haven't had that recognition. Yes. That's I'm very thankful to God, to the yes. universe, like just for the, just to be able to to be recognised for what I love to do, yes. and to hear someone compare me I know. With, with with someone like Leonardo da Vinci, who yes. is my one of my biggest inspirations as an That's artist. You see, that is, you know, what what else could I could I have to ask for? That is just absolutely. I'm honoured and I'm touched by that, right. honestly. Yes, that's nice, because I was, my heart was just filled up. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that is fantastic. You, you, are, you are definitely an inspiration to our readers and also for us as parents, I must say, of black young boys. Um, the reason I say this is that for, for young ones, seeing and reading about you goes to kind of dispute the myth that there's a void of black role models. And also they kind of look up to you and can relate to you. And then on the parent side of things, seeing and reading about you helps change that kind of mental attitude of forcing your children into various professions other than, you know, what the children are talented in doing. Yeah. Um, 
your, your parents seem to have had a massive support for your talents. Did they at any point want you to do something else? Oh, like, um, let me say this. It's like, uh, you know, because, you know, in the media, I like, I always mention how supportive my parents yes. have been. They have been extremely supportive. Yes. But the thing is, as you, as you spoke about, you know, the sort of fields our parents want us to go into, like, yeah. you know, I'm from Nigeria. Yes. Um, you know, my cousins and my family were very much, um, it's usually doctors and lawyers, yeah. the sort of profession they want you to, to, to fulfill because it's, it's lucrative. Like mm -hmm. you, you definitely have that sum at the end of the month. Yes. So to, to begin with, it wasn't as supportive. You know, mm -hmm. it's the sort of thing where I had to prove to them. Yes. You know, because they, they were worried. Like um, straight after my A levels, yeah. um, they were just they wanted me to because my sisters are lawyers and yes. they wanted me to follow that field. Okay. But I, I really had to, you know, profusely perfect. I just tell them how how passionate I am, mm -hmm. but. You have to really prove. You yes. have to show people. It's just like love in this world. You have to. You can't just say love. You have to show love. You have to. You know? Yes. And, that's, and that's right. I have to really show them how passionate I was. So when I got my first early commissions and my grades were up, they they, they sort of believed in in this. So yes. the more I I the more I drew, the more people started to recognise what I had. My parents were very you know they were like wow this is you know this is impressive mm. and from there they just really started to, to to really support. So to begin with it wasn't. As supportive, yes. but they didn't, you know, they didn't say don't ever do that. But it was, they were encouraging me to move to somewhere else. So okay. I had to, I had to really be resilient and yes. to really, you know, show them how passionate I was about it, yes. you know, and what what it could do for me and the family, yes. you know, because my goals were, you know, I always wanted to establish myself as an artist here in the UK and, yes. and in the world, but. With, with whatever money and whatever um, finance that come from it, mm -hmm. I want to help my family and my friends, exactly. you know, because, you know, as human beings, we all go through times in our life where there's hardship and adversity. Yes. Um, growing up, it was, it was quite difficult, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was difficult growing yeah. up, you know, financially, and I've always wanted to help my family. Yes. And the difficult thing was, you know, I was, I'm drawing and I'm, I'm building, I'm mastering my craft, but mm -hmm. there's no income coming in, exactly. so it was very difficult for me to to stay in there but they you know just belief is so important yes. and setting goals is is, is life changing it's so important so I have in my room I have like a wall like my wall in my room I have I always write inspirational quotes and okay. messages yes. and I recite you know yes. and um, my parents they will come in and they'll see that and yes. they'll just they'll be like what is going on here but like <laughs> I'll tell them and you know they would they just felt you know they, they felt very much encouraged and inspired yes. by, by what I was doing mm -hmm. and that's where the support really came through Definitely. because I really believed in what I was doing. Yes. So, yeah, I, I think oh. it, had, it, it took a lot of approval. Okay, of course, of course. And, and I kind of like what you said as well because that would also, you know, resonate with our readers where even though they didn't, you had to kind of prove to them and where, how you proved to them was in excelling in your skill so you kept on practicing you kept on showing them that you're really serious about this not just sitting down and saying oh you know i want to do this i want to do that without without actually showing your 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 dedication and passion towards it so those were the kind of things that your parents saw which i think is a very good thing for for kids to kind of be aware of that even if they want to do something else apart from what their parents are encouraging them to do, there has to be that zeal, that passion, which okay. you show them and, you know, and then they will support you. And any kind of, you know, reasonable parents would definitely support you if they definitely, they see that zeal and passion that you have. So I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that as well. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that. But, you know, I'm going to say a massive thank you to your parents for also being open-minded and supporting you through it all because if really if they didn't then we may not have been opportuned to see such great work from you <laughs> so i'm going to say thank you to them as well thank you okay. Very <laughs> uh, kelvin one other thing we wanted to talk with you about is can you just briefly talk us through the process um of how you bring a drawing to life what what, what inspires you and um do you draw in silence or do you kind of have some kind of music in the background? Just kind of talk us through what you do. Absolutely. Well, um, the process of drawing for me, um, before I start drawing anything, yes. whether I'm working from life or from a photograph, I always visualise the drawing complete. So before, before I start drawing, I always spend a few days and a few hours just analysing the piece. And, um, you know, from there, I just visualise it and I just put all my emotions into the piece. 
And when, I, when I'm in a post of drawing, like, you know, I like listening to um, inspirational messages, like from life coaches such as Jim Rohn, Anthony Robbins, you know, Earl Nightingale, okay. Zig Ziglar, yeah. Les Brown, and listen to something positive. Yeah. It keeps your mind healthy and, and it keeps you, it just keeps you passionate and yes. it just reminds you why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. Because especially when there was no income and it's just like I was just drawing for love, mm -hmm. you know. I had to keep myself going, you know, because it's very easy to get, you know, distracted yes. or to get discouraged mm -hmm. because you feel like what you're doing isn't benefiting yourself or your family or loved ones. Yes. So you, you also, you do need to listen to something that's going to, that's going to fulfill you, that's going to inspire you, that's going to help you, that's going to encourage you, that's yes. going to motivate you. Yes. So I usually listen to like lots of life coaches and lots of inspirational authors. And also some music as well, like, I mean, I'm very, <laughs> you know, I'm 27, but I'm very old-fashioned. Like, oh, yeah. I love old, you know, old-school music, you uh -huh. know, like Anita Baker. Yeah, that's real music, <laughs> isn't it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> just to keep my mind, you know, yeah. just to keep me in a sort of smooth, smooth mood, because mm -hmm. when I'm in a state of drawing, I like to be very calm and, you know, very focused, yes. you know, so... Dr I like, drawing in silence, I also do that too, but sometimes my thoughts... You know, yes. it really it speaks out loud sometimes when I need it to quiet down. Oh, I, so, okay. <laughs> I, I, I do work in silence. But I prefer to have something you know playing in the background, like you know, yes. some like, like listen to like an inspirational book, yes, like an audio book, and, and yeah. Oh, okay. That's the basis for me. Oh, that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, and then kind of lastly, when we before we kind of round up this interview, I wanted to still kind of say, what advice would you give our preteens and our teenagers? In your own words. Advice I'll give the preteens and teenagers? Yes, please. It would definitely be to, if that's something you love yeah. in, in life, don't just, you know, don't just go with the flow. Like, you need to learn and study what it is you love. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's a person, whether it's a craft, you know, you have to really learn and understand it because there's so much to learn. Like, everything in this life is not just surface. There's so much, there's so much to learn, yes. you know, and never ever feel you you know enough there's too much to learn you can always learn so much more and and just to persevere you mm -hmm. know really persevere because there's times where you know your friends even your family your surroundings will tell you not to do what you're doing mm -hmm. you know and discourage you but just have thick skin and just really persevere because you know even my in my journey um I graduated in 2009, and mm -hmm. a year later, in 2010, I was online, you know, showcasing my work, and there was, like, a very nice big buzz happening. But mm -hmm. then there was also a little small community who, who just decided to slam me yes. and, um, you know, call my work fake and, you know, trying to discourage me from my field. But mm -hmm. you really have to have thick skin and believe in what mm -hmm. you're doing. Belief is so important. Yeah, it's Whether it's faith in God, yes. whether it's faith in yourself, like, just believe in yourself and persevere. Mm -hmm. That, that is fun. that is fantastic. Even I've I've learned you you haven't just given that in you haven't just given that um, advice to preteens and teens. You've given it to me to me as well. So thank you so much for that, Kelvin. I would um like to say on behalf of Ten to Teens magazine that you we are very proud of you. Um, you. Continue to do what you do best and never give up. Um, you have our full support. Thank you and God bless. Oh, God bless you too. Thank you, madam. Thank you.